Thank you so much for staying with us, and apologies for that quick break there. But let's get straight into our discussion this morning. As we stated earlier, 11 states in Nigeria have registered bird flu in their poultries. Yesterday, Plateau states announced that they had destroyed seven poultries in the state because of bird flu, also known or formerly known as avian influenza. Now, this is a, it's a virus, influenza, caused by viruses adapted to birds. And it is, of course, one of the many strains of the influenza viruses that can be adapted to a specific host. You can have swine flu, dog flu, horse flu, or, of course, as we all might at one point in time have suffered the human flu. To discuss this in the studio with us, we have a veterinarian. I got that today. I would just say vets because I like to cheat because <laughs> I cannot always say veterinarian. veterinarian. <laughs> we have a veterinarian in the studio with us, Dr. Buki Odudu, and we'll be discussing the issues surrounding bird flu in Nigeria. Good morning, Dr. Buki. Welcome, doctor. Um, let's just start because for me, when, we, when they first announced it was in Lagos and Kano, they seemed like two extremes. Okay. Then there are seven states, then 11 states. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest issues for me is transmission. How, are, how is it being transmitted? Uh, and is it the same strain that we're seeing in Lagos, in Kano, in Plateau, in Ogun, and all the other states that are picking it up? Okay. Um, from what I have um, found out, um, Lagos State, the strains that were taken for analysis at um, a VOM, it's um, H5N1. Wow. Yeah. It's the H5 um, subtype. Let me put it that way. And so, um, most likely that's what you have all over, because this is Nigeria, people commute from um, Kano and all over, but then you need primary contact with the sick or dead bird, infected bird, to be able to transmit. transmit to yes. another bird. No, a bird, yeah, a bird in contact with another bird, mm -hmm. and a bird in contact with human, you know, you can get, you know, it transferred that way. So now we know that it is rare for humans to pick it up, but it isn't impossible. It's not impossible. Uh, in January 2012, China reported its second human death due to bird flu in mm -hmm. a month following other fatalities in Vietnam and Cambodia. Yeah. So even though it is rare, it is yeah. not impossible. No, so it's not. One of my big issues also is that Nigerians have poultry, but then yeah. Nigerians also have chickens at yeah. home. So if yeah. you're someone who has chickens yeah. in your vicinity, yeah. what are the symptoms you need to look for in your birds acting funny that should alert you to alert authorities? Okay, before I say that, I want you to know that that a bird is not showing symptoms does not mean the bird is not a carrier. Okay. That's, that should be established first. And then some of the symptoms you see is that these birds tend to have um, discharges, the mucus, you know, the, not from the nostrils, you can have swollen eyes, ruffled feathers, general, you know, listlessness. They look sickly. Yes, they look sickly, exactly. And most times there will be secretions. The combs and wattles can have color change, like mm. purple, kind of bluish tinge, kind of. And then sometimes the legs too, you can have some form of swelling. We have um, several. But when, you then, notice, when you notice something odd with your chickens, you know, yes. for example, if I just have five chickens in my house and I notice yes. something odd, should I carry my chickens to the vet? What do I do? Okay, it will be, it will be nice at this time that there's an outbreak that you at least get in touch with the vet okay. or someone who knows. Do you try to isolate them? Or? It's ideal. You see, um, we have a lot of um, semi-intensive rearing in Nigeria. We have backyard poultry exactly. and all of that. For me... I think that should be discouraged <coughs> now. Okay. You should actually have a way of confining your birds, restricting movement, because um, they, when they move around, they get in contact with all sorts. Anything and everything. Yeah, exactly. And then they equally transmit. That's another way you get it transmitted, because if a sick bird moves from point A to point B, dropping along the way, you're transmitting, you know. The, the organisms are in the droppings, um, secretions, and all of that. So it's actually better to have them confined, some sort, you know, and then... Like, the yeah. human flu has different, um, what we call it, vaccines. Is there a vaccine for bird flu? Is If you are a major poultry owner, mm -hmm. can you have your birds vaccinated, your chickens vaccinated against yeah, bird flu? Yeah, we, we have that. But then there was this um, fear... At that time, this was back in, was it 2006 when we yes, first had when this had outbreak. outbreak and all that? Yeah, because I remember vividly, we were trying to purchase the vaccines, and then there was this fear that, you see, when you start vaccinating a condition, you're b making it kind of endemic, as in you're, you're having it now um, 
Like we have Newcastle to explain this. We have an infection, for instance, Newcastle, that we have to always like vaccinate as farmers. Mm -hmm. You have to keep vaccinating like every um, seven to eight weeks, you must vaccinate against um, Newcastle disease. And this is something that is also similar to, they have symptoms like the bird flu. Now, if we keep vaccinating um, birds against, against bird flu, there's a likelihood of now having it here with us permanently. Mm. That's the danger. Mm. But then there are vaccines. Now, we've okay. talked about transmission and management. Now, yeah. following, you know, for the layman, my immediate worry now is eating chickens. Um, I, I like eating eggs. I yeah. like making poached eggs on a daily basis, the okay. high intake of protein. The poached now, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do I do? Do I, because I remember when this first happened, I called my sister, I told the cook to everyone, I said, you know, you, you, know, you write a shopping list of chicken. I'm like, no, scrap that, no chicken. <laughs> so should we just stop buying chicken? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Um, it has been um, found out that um, the virus is what we call unstable at high okay. temperatures, okay. 70 degrees centigrade. It makes the virus, you know... It kills uh, it. Yeah, not necessarily. I won't use the word kill. Yeah, attenuate. I would okay. rather use attenuate. Let me put it that way because okay. um, it's, um, they're heat labile. They're not stable. And, you know, it's like if your two feet are not on ground, you can't really move or okay. uh, so that's what it does so at 70 degrees centigrade most of these viruses particularly the avian influenza one is taken care of so we're lucky when we um, cook our meat if you properly cook your meat any cooked food cannot transmit but before we get to the, to the yes I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that but then about your poached eggs let me address that <laughs> before no, yeah so because are you really, <laughs> yeah really because i would advise right because um, you really need to cook anything um poultry right now, mm. especially since the outbreak, you don't know what the sauce is, you know, as in the egg you're eating, you're about to eat, you don't know what farm is from. So I would advise you at least drop it in boiling water for a few minutes thereabout, at least so that um, if there's any virus or whatever, you've already eliminated that and then you can. And then now talking about handling. Yes. I would advise, right, um, first of all, before you handle any, um, Raw chicken, raw meat. Raw meat, yes. Um, you should have maybe specific containers that you use when okay. you want to like take care of raw meat. And then when you when you want to, you, for me as a woman in the kitchen, you know, sometimes we do have abrasions, cuts here and there, which may actually expose us if you have actually come in contact with an infected bird. So your best bet for me, I would rather use gloves if I'm going to handle poultry raw. meat. Okay. Okay, if I'm going to handle poultry meat, I'd rather use gloves. And apart from that, always make sure you're washing your hands. We wash with detergent. The, the virus is equally susceptible to that. You know, the um, detergent can easily um, inactivate it, let me put it that way. Okay. So as much as possible, keep your, you know, hands washed all the time. And then you're handling in the kitchen, try as much as possible. The good thing anyway is most times when you want to remove the feathers and all that, if you're buying the live chicken, you dip it in hot, hot water. water. Yeah. So already that has helped us to some extent. And then when you're done, make sure you wash thoroughly with warm water and detergent. Even at that, there's a mis I saw an ad yeah. where a woman touched something and yeah. literally as she touched it, she touched the tap. She then, touched she touched, the then she touched the plates. Then she yeah. touched the, the pot. She's yeah. contaminated everything, everything in her kitchen. And that, that's why I'm like, okay, if you want to do, um, prepare poultry, get gloves, for instance. And you can have for now, because of the outbreak, I could even decide to clean my chicken outside. Outside, in a, in a okay. big bowl. In, you understand? Yeah, where I, once I'm done, I can wash everything there mm -hmm. and, you know, before taking it, Indoors. What about using, you know, when, when during the cri Ebola crisis yeah, here, sanitizers there, there, yeah, and there's cool. those talks of washing things with bleach. Now, I find bleach yeah. very, is it dangerous to, because when you use bleach to wash things that you use to cook, isn't that a little no, bit harsh? No, no, it's not. Okay. I, I, you, you know, there's always a proportion. Usually, like, um, when we deal with viruses, we kind of dilute bleach, um, say, one part bleach to 20 parts water, okay. or one part bleach to 30 parts water, that's a safe level. In okay. fact, you, you would, I mean, there's some, in quotes, um, what would I call it, um, water purifiers, that actually what it contains is bleach. It's, it's bleach. just, a, it's just ah. the percentage. That's you different. Know? Yeah. 
Because sometimes we need to, you even use that in cleansing water that we give to poultry sometimes, okay. we, we, you know, at a, like a ratio of one to 1,000, one um, of the bleach to 1,000 parts water. And you safe. give it to them to drink? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Now, mm -hmm. Dr. Buki, we'll be wrapping up, but an mm -hmm. issue we haven't touched base on is yeah. when bird flu struck in China and in certain places around the world mm -hmm. earlier, there was protection for the farmers for okay. those who lost their livestock. And okay. we are seeing a situation here with Plateau. They've destroyed seven farms in Lagos. When we first heard it was the destruction of two farms. Yeah. What is the safety net uh, for government, if there is any? And if there isn't, what do you recommend? Because these people are going to have to start over. They've had investments in whether vaccination and mm. food and taking care of birds that they expected yeah. to be able to sell and recoup yeah. their investments. So yeah. what next for them? Well, from what I've gathered so far, information that are um, reaching me, I. I know that um, the minister said they've approved about 39 farms okay. to be compensated. I, from the last um, information, I gathered about 145 million or something. They intend to pay um, per bird about 1,435 or something. Yes, and that, yeah, something like that per bird that is you know destroyed. So I think um, the federal government has been working on that, trying to like you know compensate farmers you know, who probably lose their birds or who they have to, like, call their Decimate birds, yeah, and yeah. all that. So I think that's in place. Okay. Yeah, I think that's Now, on a final note, yeah. um, I remember reading, when I was reading the reports of, you know, the, the history of what's been happening over the past, so far, about, about a week ago now, mm -hmm. um, states like Oyo have had pockets of incidents. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the, the people in charge there, the Association of Veterinaries, um, I'm not sure what the full name is, but okay. the Veterinary Association in Oyo, they've been saying something about problems with having enough, not having enough vets. vets. Now, okay. is, is this a real issue that we have in Nigeria? Because it's not, it's not a, a, a part of, a, um, of a science that we're particularly, you know, we're always focusing on healthcare, human healthcare. Now, mm -hmm. animal healthcare, do we really have a very, very serious problem of healthcare professionals, veterinary professionals in Nigeria? Yes, we do. Because um, I'll even I'm sorry to say, um, even those that are there right now, I'm not sure they have the right tools okay. or facility or given to do their <clears throat> job. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, I don't think that is available right now. So um, wouldn't that be dangerous, especially in this time, with such a if this was to become like a epidemic. massive you an see, epidemic in the country? You see, part of the part of the approach is surveillance. Okay. You know, monitoring and all. There are a lot of things that we need to. Um, look into a layman may not really understand how to run it the veterinarian knows okay what biosecurity is how do you you know implement it on a farm how do you implement it here there and all that teach you how to you know but when they're not there and we have a lot of people going around saying i'm this and i'm that and they just you know simple biosecurity measures on farms around the, you know, the houses and things like that can really help in containing the you know, infection and all of that. But without um, the proper people in the right places doing what they're supposed to do, really, we may just have this thing. All right. Yeah. Dr. B uh, Buki yeah. Odudu, thank you so much. And we look forward because this is just the beginning of the conversation. Okay. We do hope that the 11 states will be successfully able to contain uh, the bird flu um, Outbreak. outbreak. I didn't want to say pandemic, <laughs> epidemic. Okay. The birth no, outbreak no, 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 no. at this point yet. in time. But we do look forward. And other things that will be coming up. We talk about a lot, as you said, about human health. But the health of the animals around us, how interesting or how enough uh, serious do we take it? We'll be having Dr. Buki Odudu back in the studio with us. Don't forget, you can also tweet. We'll make sure her contact is available if you have other vet-related questions. So you can tweet at GMNS Cool TV or go to Facebook.com forward slash Cool TV Nigeria.